All right, everybody, this is Ross. Um, in today's video, we're gonna once again be talking about frost. And it's a shame that we're doing a video like this again. This is not a video I wanna make, but first off, I wanna warn everybody that we are expected here in the Northeast a frost, potentially even snow. Um, here in my climate, in my location, uh, on the 9th, the morning of the 9th and the morning of the 10th, we are potentially going to have a frost. It's not a guarantee. I think the chances are probably 50-50 at this point. Uh, we have a forecast for 36 Saturday morning and then 37 on Sunday morning. So I like my chances. However, the forecasts that have been kind of been putting out or been published by weathermen and on different weather sites that you can find, they don't really seem to be all that accurate this year. So I'm not really all that trustworthy of the weather and what they're saying the weather is going to be like. Um, it could definitely be worse than they're predicting, right? I mean, that's always a possibility, regardless of uh, how great of a prediction and um, how great their models are on this particular subject. I do, however, think, and I'm interested to find out if the fact that a lot of us have not been driving, there's a lot less pollution and fossil fuel use, what effect that has had since the coronavirus has made us all pretty much live very strange lives, um, what that has done to the pollution and of course then the climate, how that affects everything. Um, because if we don't have these fossil fuels and this, these greenhouse gases warming things up, um, it seems like the pollution, the pollution's definitely cleared up very quickly in a lot of the major cities. Really shortly after people stopped driving in the beginning of this pandemic. Um, so I wonder what effect that has had on the, the models of the, of the forecasts and also what effect that has had just in our climate, just, you know, in our weather. Um, I, it'll be really interesting, I think, to see what a climatologist has to say or a number of them have to say after this is all over. And it's like almost a weird time that this may never happen again, at least um, in the near future, of the entire world just stopping a lot of the pollution that they normally are producing. Um, so I think this is a cool time in at least cl the climatology field to be learning something like this. Um, now there is the solar minimums, right? So on NASA's website, you can read about the solar minimums, but they are claiming that the, the sun is not as strong. The rays are not as strong this year uh, because of these solar minimums. So it's been going on, I think, for a decently long time and it's gonna continue to go on. So the earth should be cooler than um, maybe it was 50 years ago. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. But that plus the addition of no pollution and a lot less fossil fuels, I should say, um, we are probably a lot cooler than people would have expected. And therefore, these forecasts, um, we may be even getting colder than what the forecasts are saying. Um, so I'm being very cautious this time and this year just because of what's going on. And I think you guys should be too. Um, we did videos talking about, in, prior, in a prior video, we talked about the methods of protection. So I'm not gonna necessarily cover all the methods of protection from the frost here. Um, and then in another video, we actually uncovered the aftermath of the frost on the uh, 17th of April is when the, the prior frost came in. The, the things that really got hit was the kiwi vine um, that was a 28 degree low with a frost. Um, the kiwi vine got hit. Some of the in-ground figs got hit that I did not cover. I didn't cover every single bud on every single in-ground fig. I covered as much as I could. So the buds that weren't protected got fried. And also the persimmon trees, uh, the buds that were a little bit further along in their development and their swelling process also really got hit hard. So I have to really be careful this time around, even though it's not as cold. It's not as cold. 
I shouldn't have to worry too much, but if there is a frost, because you can still get a frost at 36 and 37, even 40 degrees, 42 degrees, it's possible. Um, if a frost does come in, it may only do some very light damage to the figs or the persimmons or the pomegranates, but it's not something I want to deal with and have to worry about. So I'm going to come out here the night before and cover all of these different plants, all the figs in the patio. We have them everywhere. There's so many figs out now. This is so unusual this time of the year to be having to worry about this. It's crazy. Um, the citrus are going to have to be brought inside. Now, what we did learn since our last frost, because it was a nice eye-opening experience, right? A lot of you had contacted me and mentioned the, um, the different studies that universities have done. There's one I think uh, University of Michigan has done, and they have these charts that I'll probably put in the description of this video, or if somebody could put that chart in the, uh, in the comments here for people to look at. But there's a chart that I've actually known about for years, but it describes the kill temperatures for the flowers of different fruits that you can grow. Things like, really uh, the only things I've found that were published so far were the, st the stone fruits, the pears, and the apples. Because those are some of the most widely grown fruits in the United States. So they have the data on those. And really around 28 degrees, you're pretty much all right. So even if they're in full bloom, you should be fine at 28 degrees. Um, even after bloom, when you have the, uh, some of the green fruits, small green fruits, even 28 degrees is okay because you only will lose about 10% of your crop, which is probably a good thing. I mean, that helps me out in thinning my fruits, right? <laughs> There's a lot of fruits to thin on these, on not necessarily cherries, but some of the other stone fruits, the apples and the pears for sure. So it's sort of a good thing. Um, however, I don't necessarily know just yet because you can really see here on this cherry that I have cherries that have formed and they're getting some size and they'll probably fruit maybe a month and a half from now. If a frost were to hit these cherries, not even just 28 degrees, what about a frost? Will the frost be enough to kill off these cherries? Now, I did have some apricot trees that also got hit and the apricots, it was 28 degrees, it was a frost, and they all dropped every single apricot. None of them held on. They looked like they got hit by a frost. You could visibly see it, uh, which tells me that one, either we got colder than 28 degrees, or two, which I think is more likely, is that because the fruits had set and actually got some size to them and have been far away from that blooming state that they were in because the apricots they bloom first right they set their fruit first and then the plums are not far behind um, so if I have fruits like this and they get hit with a frost what's gonna happen um, you know if it's somewhat like the the peaches and they're just covered with their little sheath the flower sheath they're gonna be okay if it's post bloom on the apples and they're just forming their little fruits post bloom, they're going to be okay. If it's something like this that's just completely exposed and they're pretty far along, even my peaches now are pretty far along, what's going to happen with those? Am I going to lose all my peaches? Am I going to lose all my plums, my cherries? Um, probably at this point, maybe a couple apples, a couple of the pears. So I'm pretty worried about that. Um, and I need to do some research. Maybe someone has some information out there on it. But I couldn't find any hard data on that particular topic. Um, it would make sense to me that if a fruit gets hit with a frost uh, that is set its fruit and it's pretty well developed, I imagine it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna go well. Um, what I will tell you for sure is the pomegranates, the persimmons, and the figs need protection. Some other things I'm sort of on the fence about here and really worried about, well, obviously these citrus trees, 
But if I bring you guys over to the grape vines, and there's the kiwi vine, the kiwi I'm certainly not too happy about because I don't know what's going to happen. The, uh, this kiwi vine already took a big hit. It's putting out new buds now, and if we get another frost, is this gonna be the end of all this growth? And I'm gonna have to wait until something comes back and have to cut it back even further. And then you've got the grapevines, my European grapevines, who now have some fruits, the beginnings of fruit clusters. Will this be enough, any sort of frost at all? I have to do my research here figure out if these grape clusters will be uh, destroyed when in contact with a frost. You can see that there. And there's also one in the back. So this one's a bit, this particular shoot's a bit further ahead of others, but um, I guess I could always sac sacrifice even this cluster right here. I could sacrifice these, but what about the actual branches the the new growth themselves if they they're going to get hit with a frost is that going to be enough to kill off these these new shoots because these new shoots are very tender i imagine they're a lot like a fig or a persimmon and if that's the case i'm going to lose all my fruit for the year um, on those particular fruits which would really be upsetting and not something i want to do and on these apples there are some of them that are much further ahead of others in terms of their their fruit set so it's just i don't know guys we'll have to do some research and cross our fingers and uh maybe i will come out here and protect everything i can if i do learn that the fruits will have to get protected as well even on the, the apples the pears and stone fruits you know i just got to do what i got to do so I want to thank you guys out here for watching this one. We'll talk to everybody soon, all right? Um, take care, and uh, we'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.